things in life that come to us in times that we need to stand up or sit down. We need to do what we need to do in order to, to purvey the truth. We need to do what we need to do in order to make sure that our faith is known and that our faith stays secure. We all have those times when we have to do something that we may not want to do because nobody else in the room wants to do it. Right? How many of you have ever been there? You've had to make that decision. And wonder, is it the right one? Or what's going on? Our reading for this morning is a continuation, remember, right? We started this a long, to about three weeks ago, we started in um, John chapter 13, which was the beginning of the night when Jesus sat down with his disciples and he washed his, their feet. And then Judas left, and then he gave them a new commandment. And then they all went to the garden to pray, which culminated in the night of Jesus being arrested, and Jesus being handed over to Caiaphas, and Caiaphas last week handing Jesus over to Pilate. This morning is a continuation of last week's trial of Jesus, and it says at the beginning, our very first verse says, and, Jesus, and Pilate had him flogged, which makes it sound like, who did the flogging? Pilate. Now, do you think, I'm not, honestly, Pilate did it? No, someone in his courts did it for him, right? But Pilate had Jesus flogged. Why? You see, there's several reasons why a person could be flogged in, in that day and time. One would be for, for punishment. He could flog them so that they knew that they did something wrong and that, that they shouldn't do that again. However, flogging was also a step that led to crucifixion. There was never a person who was crucified who was not first flogged. You were always flogged before you were crucified. Why? What does flogging do? I can't, I can't really hear you, but you guys speak. It rips open your back. Basically just takes all of the skin on your back and just makes it be non-existent. Which is important when you get crucified because then that makes crucifixion even that much more painful. Because in crucifixion you don't die from the wounds in your hands or your feet. You die from asphyxiation. So Pilate had Jesus flogged. Was Pilate planning the whole time to crucify Jesus? Or did he really want to hand Jesus over to be free? See, we all have choices. That we have to make. This past week, I know there's, there's several people here to, this morning that have struggled with a choice just this past week. And I'm making no judgment on any of those. But one, one that came up that, I, that is not from anyone in this congregation was a, was a group of three students in a, in a school in rural Arkansas. How many of you heard about these three kids? No one? I got one, I got one hand over here. Right, this last week was the national walkout, right? Because it was a month after the, the, the school shooting in Florida. And we need to keep our kids safe. And we need to do the things that, that we have to do in order to, to make them feel safe in the places where they are. Because none of us want our kids to be in any place where they're in danger. But this past week, there were students all over the country that decided that they needed to do something about this. And so in this rural school in Arkansas, these three students, I believe they're all three boys, don't, talk, don't quote me on that, I'm not completely sure on that, but three students at 10 a.m. on March 14th walked out of the school, knowing that they were going to face some kind of punishment. One of them even said, I read articles about this, about how when he stood up in the classroom, he got... He got looks of, of awe and wonder, people like, what in the world are you doing, to sneers, to people actually hateful looks as he walked out of the school. And he walked out of the school, that's the policy of the school. You have to do what you have to do. And the kids all accepted that. They actually, the one of the kids said, I accept this, I, don't, I have no ill feelings or disdain or anything for the administration of this building because they did what they have, what they are supposed to do. So therefore, 
I did what I did, thinking that it was the right thing to do, knowing I was going to be punished for it, and I hold no disdain for those who punished me because they did what they had to do as well. This is a subject that's prevalent right now, and how do we deal with this? How do we make the choices that help us be the people that God has called us to be? You see, this morning we have Pilate standing there with Jesus, questioning him back and forth, going with Jesus and then outside to the Jews, with Jesus and then outside to the Jews. And it's all about who has the power here. Because Pilate had Jesus flogged, and then he asks him some questions, and he goes out to the Jews, and he brings them out wearing this, this purple robe, which is the sign of royalty, and this crown of thorns, and he says to them, what do you want me to do with them? And what do the Jews say? Oh, you can do better than that. What do the Jews say? Crucify. You can do better than that. I want the, I want the cross back here to hit the wall. <laughs> what do the Jews say? Crucify. So who has the power? Is it Pilate? Or is it the Jews? You see, because Pilate could, I heard somebody say yes, I think, which is the right answer, actually. <laughs> I don't know who said that, but that was, a good, that was a very good answer. It's the crowd mentality, right? Pilate had the choice of what he could do. He knew that Jesus was, was innocent. He, found, he said over and over again that he finds no reason to, to put this man under accusation or to punish him anymore, right? He said that time and time again. But when that time this morning he goes out to the crowd and they shall crucify him and they say he needs to die because he claims to be the son of God. Which is one of Pilate's crumbling points. Or buttons, should we say. Because you see we all have choices to make and we all have points at which we will crumble. And we all have buttons that people can push. So Pilate goes back in and asks Jesus where he's actually from. Jesus doesn't answer him and he says, he says, don't you realize the power that I have over you? And what does Jesus say? He says, you could not do anything unless you were given power from above. The same word used in John chapter 3 verses... 3 through 7, which might not mean anything to you at this point, but that's where Nicodemus, John chapter 3 is where Nicodemus goes to see Jesus under the cover of darkness because we don't want anyone to know what's happening. And Jesus says to him, I truly tell you, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven unless you are born from above. It actually says there, not again. It's the same word used that Jesus used here with Pilate when he says, You can't do anything to me unless you are given power from above. You cannot see the kingdom of heaven unless you are born from above. You have no power over me unless it was given to you by God. And at that point, Pilate knows that he can release Jesus. Because remember last week, what did I say about Pilate? Who is Pilate? He is the regional governor of the, re of the region of Judea, right? Who does he answer to in that region? No one. What he says goes. What he says happens. If he wants to call a legion of, of, of the armies to come in and decimate the people that are coming against him, he can do it. If he wants to set Jesus free, he can do it. So why didn't he? See, we all have choices to make. We all have points at which we will give in and go with the crowd. We all have points at which somebody pushes a button and it sets us off. Pilate then goes back to the Jews and he says, Do you want me to crucify your king? And they're like, We don't, he's not our king. Because Pilate sat down on the judgment seat, or did he put Jesus on the judgment seat, right? It says, when Pilate heard these words, that no one can be a friend of a 
criminal and also be a friend of Caesar. Because if you claim to free this man, then you're no friend of the emperor. He went out and sat down on the judgment seat, or it says, When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at the place called the stone pavement. The way that the wording of the original Greek goes, it's not clear on who actually sat on that bench. It could have been Jesus. It could have been Pilate. But we don't know. But regardless of where Jesus is standing, who is actually under judgment this time? Because the Jews are crying to crucify Jesus. They say, you can't to Pilate, you can't be a friend of this man and release him and also do what the emperor needs for you to do. And so Pilate crumbles. They pushed his last button and he said, fine, you win. Crucify him. Because the Jews then respond, right? Because Pilate asked them, do you really want me to crucify your king? And the Jews responded, we have no king but God. Is that what they said? Right. What should they have said? We have no king but God. But instead, they judged themselves and said, we have no king but Caesar. So who is actually under judgment here? Because you see, we all have those choices to make. We all will stand at that place like Pilate and see the truth about Jesus and know the thing that we're supposed to do and need to go this way. But see everybody else in the crowd calling us to go this way. And as you stand at that juncture, what are you going to do? Are you going to give in to the mentality of the crowd? Or are you going to stand firm in your faith knowing that you're the only one that's there, that you're the only one that's going to say this, that you're the only one that could possibly step out and do this, but hold fast to that because you know that's what God has called you to do. I read a quote this past week, and I know I'm going to butcher it right now, but it was something to the point of God did not send Jesus to the cross. The cross was man's invention to, to do a painful and hurtful thing to each other, and God just allowed it to happen to Jesus. He didn't get in the way of it. But he allowed us to live out our savagery for what we needed to have happen. So I wonder how many of us could stand in the face of, of things that are happening in this world that we don't want to see happening. And stand in the love that Christ has called us to. Because that's what Pilate could have done. But he didn't. So what are you going to do in that moment? What is the choice that you're going to make? Are you going to crumble? Or are you going to stand firm knowing that God always stands with you, even when everybody else walk, turns and walks away? Because Jesus did that for you. And he looks at you and asks, 